I, I, I got a question to the panel. Can you tell a little bit of importance of a diet? I recently read about some gut bacteria that could trigger APS. So if that uh, I just change a diet, would it be helpful? For example, uh, I heard some people feel better on ketogenic diet, as a professor said something about this. What do you think about? Is it safe? Is, is it the, could it be the answer to the joint pain, fatigue, or brain fog? Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about that research you mentioned, and then think other people know more about diet. The paper you mentioned about a gut bacteria which could cause... I know about this because there's a newspaper called The Mail on Sunday, and the people will be familiar with it. And uh, APS Support UK asked me to, to talk to them about this very thing. And uh, I'm not a big fan of The Mail on Sunday, let's face it, but uh, I talked to them. And so I, the paper itself was very, very careful not to say that these bacteria cause APS. It was a paper which was in mice, and the mice had been given huge, enormous quantities of these bacteria, much more than you could ever eat in a diet. And what they said, there was some link between some structure on the bacteria of the mice and beta-2 glycoprotein 1, so they can make antibodies. The mice didn't get specific APS. So there's nothing in humans about it. And the reason I got involved was that the Mail on Sunday wanted to run something saying, don't eat probiotics, you might get APS. And I said, no, that is not what this paper says. Please don't do that. And they didn't, to give them credit. So you don't have to worry about that. As for the issue of diet, um, I'm going to hand over to other people because I don't really know much about this. Mm. Well, I, I'm, I'm not a diet expert either, but my patients always talk to me about uh, diet. Um, you also have to be uh, aware that there is trends, even in research and in medicine, and the microbiome is a big trend. So bacteria, the three trillion bacteria that we have, all of us, into our gut uh, are having an impact. So a similar paper this summer about lupus and bacteria, and you know, um, there's all of these uh, people that go on a limb and then they have colonic transplants and, you know, the stool tra transplants, you know, it exists. So, uh, no, we're not there yet. And I think right now we're even able to say what diet would allow you to change from what bacteria. And it's a balance of bacteria. And most of those bacteria, we don't even know about them. So it's really premature to bring it into clinical, clinical practice. We mean to say it's not an interesting topic for research. And maybe in the future, we will find more about how diet or bacteria can influence us. Um, that being said, uh, just very broad principle in, in Canada, we still recommend just the regular food guys. Um, if there are people that really, really want to invest into complementary medicine, not alternative, but complementary medicine. Sometimes the omega trees may have a benefit on vascular tree. Uh, but if you are on anticoagulation, if you take a very large, they could actually affect your, your bleeding. So you have to be careful and you have to know what you're getting into. So, and, and there's no diet at this point that should be recommended with, with APS, uh, at least in can, my Can I ask Catherine, because I think you have some knowledge of this. Yeah, I mean, I've looked into a lot of diet and warfarin, but I, I've also looked into the gut as well. Um, and I'm a big believer now. I used to have um, real bad indigestion and found that because the more medication I was taking um, after being diagnosed, um, it was starting to have an effect on my stomach as well. So I was starting to take a meprazole and, and all the other, these other things. So I thought I'd kind of do a bit myself uh, to try and help. So I got into kefir. Um, and I actually grow my own kefir, um, so I've got milk kefir and I've got water kefir, and I swear by it, we guzzle it every day. There are some things out there that say don't take milk kefir if you're on warfarin, because it's very high in vitamin K. That's not true, it's very high in vitamin K2, which doesn't have warfarin. K1 will affect your warfarin, vitamin K1. But uh, yeah, I don't take any um, sort of omeprazole or anything like that anymore, um, and I manage my warfarin so to deadly uh, now, so uh, I, I stick to my kefir and uh, love it. So, what is that? Kefir is a. For, uh, I can't say it's probiotic because you're not allowed to say that now, are you? Um, it survives through the gut wall. It, get, it survives through the stomach to get to the gut wall and help. Uh, is it something you buy? My, or something you yeah. grow in yeah, your garden? Yeah, grow, you grow. It's a. It's a, it's a oh, yeast. Yeah. Um, a yeast product. Yeah. yeah. It's in the milk. It's, it's in the milks. Yeah. It's a yogurts and milk section. Um, so, uh, and you get a water-based one, which is for water, um, and you get a milk-based one, obviously for your milk. Don't mix the two. <laughs> but uh, yeah, wonderful. And wonderful, and works well with warfarin. It's fine. The Sainsbury's do it. 
Yeah, yeah but you've got, you've, got to, you've got to watch because actually a lot of these shop bought ones are not from live cultures. The ones I make are from live cultures, and you can buy the work live cultures yeah, or, or get them for shops. other Since people. Since we're not allowed to advertise, I need to stress that other supermarkets are available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, 